Okay, just a quick reminder of what similar triangles are. Similar triangles, in order for triangles to be similar, um, the way I'm gonna write it is corresponding Angles have to be congruent. And that the corresponding sides are proportional. And we get this definition for similar triangles from the generic definition of similar polygons where the base definition is the same, okay? For two polygons to be similar, all of the corresponding angles have to be the same. And then the, all the sets of corresponding sides have to have the same proportion to get from one of them, one of the figures to the other figure. However, triangles are special. I don't need to show both conditions in order to get the, um, to prove that they are similar. All I really have to do is I have to show that the corresponding angles are congruent. Okay. And when you guys get into high school geometry, what we're going to do is we're going to write down a theorem. And I'm going to write it down now in words so you guys can get used to seeing some of these math words. And it says, if three angles in one triangle... are congruent to the three angles. Let me use a number like I did on the other one. In a second triangle, the triangles are congruent. not congruent, are similar. I'm going to put three letters out here on the left-hand side here. Those A stand for angles. So if I match up three angles in one triangle to the exact same angle measurements in another triangle, I can call those two triangles similar. Here's what's neat. I don't need all three angles, and we're going to show why in a second. We have another theorem. It's called angle-angle. And this one is identical to the previous one, except where I have the number three, I replace it with the number two. What it's going to say is if two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in a second triangle, then the triangles are similar. Okay? And I'm going to show you why on the next slide. I'm going to give you guys some time to actually, if you want to, write out that second one in words. And um, if you're done writing it out in words, I want you to kind of think about why if one is a true fact, why that second one would also be a true fact. If it's a true fact that if three angles in one triangle grew into three in another, the triangles are similar, why do I only need two? Start thinking about that as you're copying this down.
Okay. If you did not finish copying it down, please leave space in your notes for it so that you can go back and back fill it after I post the notes today. So I'm going to show you why the angle angle is a true fact, given that angle 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 is a true fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw an arbitrary triangle. Mr. Taylor. Yes. I have a question. Um, type it in chat. We don't speak when oh. I'm recording. Right. Sorry. I'll wait for you while I draw these two triangles. You can type it. If not, when I get done, after I stop recording, I can open it up. How do triangles 360 degrees, even though three angles can't go past 180? Um, we did that in class the other day, uh, and I will go back and add that one again. And actually, I'll do a different proof than the one I did in class. So in class, I told you to imagine that if I have a triangle, I give you guys would have walked into class and I would have told you to rip off those three corners of the triangle. And then what I would have done is we would have drawn a, a, a straight line and I would have put my pieces of my triangle and fit the square, the, the straight pieces together and because from here all the way around to here is the same as from here to here, this is a straight line. Therefore, it's 180 degrees. And then I get all those pieces and that gives me 180. So that was the informal way. Here's another thing I wanna talk about. So we're gonna do it semi-formally. You will see this one again in high school geometry. If you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, we learn that we have a whole bunch of different angle pairs that are congruent. So the first one that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a transversal like this. And I know that angle A is congruent to this angle A. I can draw another transversal. I can draw a transversal like this, where this angle that I'm gonna call B has the same measurement as this angle that I'm gonna call B. Those are corresponding angles. I also know that vertical angles are congruent. This angle C is equal to that angle C. And if I take these upper angle A, B, and C and add those three angles together, I have to have 180 degrees. If A plus B plus, because it's on a straight line, if A plus B plus C up here is equal to 180 degrees, that means A plus B plus C inside the triangle also have to equal 180 degrees. So instead of me just speaking the words when we get to geometry class, we'll actually write down each step of a proof to actually do this formal proof of proving why triangles add up to 180 degrees. Okay. So those are two different ways, an informal proof on the right and a, what I'm going to call a semi-formal proof on the left of why they're 180 degrees. And it's not that we can't go past 180 degrees. It's just that in, in this class, an individual angle, one angle does not go past 180 degrees in this class. Sums of angles can go well over that. They can even go past 360. And we're going to see that later this year. So hopefully that answered that question. And then we'll go back to the one I asked. Why do I only need to have two angles congruent to show that the triangles are similar? And here's the reason why. If I know that A plus B plus C is 180, and I know that A plus B plus D has to equal 180, and that's just that triangle sum theorem. 
where we said that the three angles in a triangle have to add to 180. What I did is I set this up. So angle A is congruent to angle A. Angle B is congruent to angle B. That's why I use the same letters. So what I'm showing you here is two angles in the left triangle, A and B, are congruent to two angles in the right triangle, A and B. Well, I've got two things that are equal to 180 degrees. I can set those two things equal to each other. So I have A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus D. And I notice that I have two of the, I have some similarities on both sides of the equation. I can think about it from my elementary school standpoint, that if this is a teeter-totter, and I take the same things off of both sides of the teeter-totter, it's still going to be balanced. So if I take off this A, that A has to go. And if I take off this B, that B has to go. Or I can think about it as a middle schooler, where if I want to get rid of something in an equation, I can subtract it. If I subtract it from one side, I also have to subtract it from the other side. And in either case, I get C is equal to D. What that's telling me is that two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in another triangle. The third angles also have to be congruent. And that's telling me that all three angles are congruent. So I am, I already have the fact that if three angles in one are congruent to three angles in another, then the triangles are similar. So instead of me having to do this exact same process, every single time I have two angles in one triangle congruent to two angles in another, I generically show you we can do it for any generic triangle, and it's always going to be a fact. So two, two methods that we have so far, I can show three angles, I can show two angles, Another method that we can use to show that two triangles are similar to each other is um, actually, I don't think it covers that in your book. I don't want to do high school on you guys. We're going to skip that. We're going to do some practice problems. So this is your I ready book. So it says, are the triangles are similar? How do you know? Show your work. So here's the first thing I want you guys to realize. The X's in the bottom triangle are not the same as the X's necessarily in the top triangle. Okay? So, um, well, they are, but I can't just directly go across to do them. So the X's are going to be the same. But I have to be careful. The first thing I have to do is I have to solve for X down here. And once I solve for X down there, I can put it up here. There's not enough information in the top triangle to figure that out. So the first thing is I need to find out all my angle measurements in the bottom one. And I use the facts that I know that they add up to 180 degrees. So 35 plus 4X degrees plus... 5x plus 10 degrees is equal to 180. Okay. Um, based off of parent-teacher conferences last week, some of you start to get overwhelmed when we got more than one thing being added together. So I want you guys to realize I've got this degree here, degree here, degree here. My answer is going to end up having degrees. So for some of you, it may be easier not to put those degree symbols on all the time and make sure that you remember that these things are degrees. The other thing that may help some of you, once you write your equation down, get some colored pencils out. And then, because our next step is called combining like terms, terms are things that have the same variables to the same powers in them, okay? So things that have X's, I would underline in one color. Things that don't have X's, I'm going to underline in a different color. 
I do not mind if you do this all the way through high school. There are times when I'm doing college, the, third, the sixth college class that I teach, that I'll get all the different color dry erase markers out to help organize the work that I'm going to do. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine them. I'm just going to do the math that is shown here. So for my X's, I have four X's and five X's that give me nine of them. I use fruit a lot as analogies, okay? If the letters are what are confusing you, just replace the letters with a fruit. If you have four apples and you have five more apples, how many apples do you have? In this case, I have nine. Don't feel bad if you have to use one of those analogies. The other combined thing I can do is I have my number parts. I have the 35 that I'm adding 10 to. So that's going to give me 45. I did nothing at all to the right-hand side of my equation. Now this looks a lot more reasonable. And this is a basic two-step equation where my next thing is to move the numbers to the other side. I'm going to move them to the other side by subtracting 45 from both sides. And that's going to give me my 9x is equal to um, 135 degrees, 135. The last step I need to do is I need to get the x by itself. And I undo multiplying by 9 by dividing by 9. So I'm going to divide both sides by 9. And so it's 20 minus 5, which would be 15. So my x is 15. That is not my answer. What I now need to do is I'm going to use that 15 to fill in my angle measurements. So 4x is going to be 60. So this one's 60 degrees. 5x plus 10, so I can now do 5x plus 10. I put a 15 in for the x. That's going to give me 75 plus 10 is 85 degrees. And then in the top one, I multiply the 15 times 3. 3x minus 10 is going to be 45 minus 10, which is 35 degrees. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these. Are there at least two angles that have the same measurement? That's all I need. Are there two angles that have the same measurements? Yes, there are. I have a 35 and a 60. I have a 35 and a 60. And then I can say, yes, they are similar. So all I'm doing is I'm doing the work from some of the previous homework assignments, and then I'm trying to see that if I get at least two angles that match between the triangles. If you are having problems doing this part right here, doing the arithmetic to get from the fact here down to the bottom, I would like you to at least show me that you understand the relationship of what things add to what. If there are all the angles in a triangle, they have to add to 180. If there are angle pairs that are congruent, do they have to equal each other? Okay, show me that fact and then use the office hours and I can start helping you work through this process. We're gonna do plenty of these, this process over and over and over this year, but um, that's gonna help you out. I want you at a minimum to show me you understand the relationship. So are the triangles similar? Yes, how do I know? These two sets, um, let me get the highlighter. That set of angles and that set of angles are congruent to each other and I only need two angle pairs. 
Same thing here. This one looks a little easier to me because all I have to do is I just have to find the measurement of the third angle, okay? This one says to find DE. Well, to find DE, first thing I have to do is I have to prove that they're similar, okay? Once I prove that they're similar, I can use corresponding parts being proportional. So in this part right here, what I need to do is I need to figure out, I'm going to call this angle X, 63 plus 77 plus X is 180. Just like last time, combine my like terms. So that's 140 plus X is 180. Get rid of the 140 by subtracting it, and I get X is 40. So I have a 40 and a 63, there's a 40 and a 63. Alternatively, I could have done work here, solve for what I'm gonna call like a Y, and if I would have done that math, I would have got 77. You only need two of them. So once I prove that they're gonna be similar, I make sure I draw them in the same orientation. So I'm gonna put that note, draw in same, orientation. So that means all the angles match up. The 63 here is on the lower left. The um, 77 is on the lower right. And then the other angle is up at the top. If you draw them in the same orientation, what you're going to do is you're going to put a letter in for your missing thing. Okay, here we go. Actually, I'm just going to use what they gave me. They want to know DE. If it does not, so if I write something like this, DE with a segment over the top, that's called segment DE. If I wanna know its length, I'm either gonna put a cursive L of the segment, which means that that's the length of DE, or they're not equal. The segment's not equal to it, okay? Or I can just write the two endpoints of the segment without the line across the top and without the L in front of it. So when I say find the length, find DE, they're asking me to find the length of segment DE. That's a terminology thing, and you'll get a lot of practice of that in high school geometry. So here's what I do. I look at what I'm trying to find, and I write it down. And every one of these problems, if you're trying to find a proportion, you're going to have two fractions that are equal to each other. There are two basic ways to set this up. Once you have the thing you're solving for on top of one of the fractions, I can either do left side over left side equals bottom over bottom. I can do left over left equals bottom over bottom. Or I can do left over bottom equals left over bottom. So left of triangle, I'm going to call this one and two. Left of triangle one over left of two equals bottom of one over bottom of two. Or left of one over bottom of one equals left of two over bottom of two. If you draw them in the same orientation, it makes setting up the proportion fairly straightforward. In this case, I'm going to use this one. Left over left equals bottom over bottom. Left is the DE. 21 is this left. Bottom of one is 20. Bottom of this one is 14. What I have is my proportion. Right now I am dividing by 21. I need to get rid of dividing by 21. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by 21. And I'm gonna show the work over here. So I have 20 times 21 over 14. As far as I'm concerned, right now this is a calculator problem for you. Okay, or you, you can try it longhand. What I want you to try to get used to seeing is, hey, 
I know two goes into 20 10 times, and I know two goes into 14 seven times. Oh, look at this. I know that seven goes into seven one time, and I know that seven goes into 21 three times. And then my final answer is 10 times three, which is 30, over one, which is just 30. Again, once you are at this point, for right now, it is a calculator problem if you need it. If you are comfortable doing the simplification without a calculator, go ahead and do that. You should try to build your skills in the simplification. Okay, but for right now, I don't care if you stick that number in a calculator or not. The next one, nine. It says an ironing board and its legs on the floor form two triangles. The top of the board ST is parallel to the floor PQ. Um, they have these backwards. This is supposed to be PQ. This is supposed to be ST. Write a similarity statement for the two triangles, okay? So first thing I need to do is I need to figure out which angles match up with which angles. So I'm gonna use some color here. I do the easy one first. I know that that angle is congruent to that one. They're vertical angles. I know that P is congruent to T because they are alternate interior angles. I also know that S is congruent to Q. So I want to write a triangle similarity statement. What that means is that the angle pairs have to match in the same location. I am arbitrarily going to pick triangle PQR. And I'm going to say it's similar to another triangle. And then what I'm going to do is my P is the red angle. So that means I have to use the red angle in the bottom one. My Q is the blue angle. So I have to use the blue angle in the bottom one. And then the last angle is the green angle. So I have to use the green angle in the bottom one. When you are writing similarity statements, you need to make sure that you are listing the corresponding angle parts with each other. Are there any questions right now before I go to the next one thing I wanna do? Um, and then I'll stop the recording and have some bi-directional questions. Okay, if you have your homework packet in front of you or you're on Google Classroom, um, this is one of your problems from your homework. Okay, so it wants to know whether the two triangles are similar to each other. You are going to use this triangle right here for problems one, two, three, and four. So the first thing I want to do if I was going to do this, these groups of problems is I want to find the missing angle in the left-hand triangle. So I know 62 plus 80 plus my angle Z is 180. Combine like terms. 142 plus Z is 180. Subtract the 142. And that tells me that Z is 38 degrees. You only have to do that work once because you're going to be using that for all four of the problems. Now what you want to do is you only need one more angle for problem number one. 80 matches with the 80. So I only need one more angle. Okay? So if I look at this part right here, this angle that they have marked here 
And then the one I'm putting the dot in right here, they have to add up to 180 degrees because they form a straight line. See that you see, so I'm gonna do 147 plus, I'm just gonna call this ACB. Actually, we're just gonna call it an X for now. They have to add up to 180. Subtract the 147 from both sides. And I get X equals 33 degrees. So if I put a 33 here, does that 33 match with any of these angles here? No, it does not match. So I can write not similar. So as soon as you find one angle pair that doesn't match, you guarantee they're not gonna be similar. And the second problem that I'm gonna be doing from your homework is I believe problem number three. I'm gonna put a 38 degrees here. And it wants me to um, determine whether things are similar or not, okay? So here, the first thing I've gotta do is I gotta find X. Okay, there are two different ways for me to find this X based off of the stuff we discussed last week. So last week we said that the sum of the exterior angles in a triangle is 360 degrees. Okay, so I can set this plus this, plus this, equal to 360. That is one way that I can find out what my X is. So that's method one. Method two, I know that, I'm gonna circle it in blue, I know that the blue stuff added together is equal to 180 degrees. For those of you that hate all of the letters and stuff, I would use method two. But because some of you hate all of the letters and stuff, I'm gonna use method one, because I want you to get used to seeing, manipulating all of those things. So the first thing I know is the three angles that are exterior have to add to 360. So 8x minus 34 plus 4x plus 12 plus 6x minus 14 equals 360. I'm going to go back, like I told you, underline your like terms. If you need to use this, use it. So for the blue stuff, so I'm gonna have a blue term here and I'm gonna have a red term here. And those are going to equal what they originally equaled. So the blue, I have eight plus four is 12 plus six is 18. For the red, I have negative 34 plus 12, which is negative 22. Minus 14 is negative 36. If you need to, use a calculator to combine those like terms. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the 36 to the other side by adding 36. My last step to find X this way is divide by 18. I'm gonna cheat, X is 22. I didn't use a calculator. Here's what I did, is I knew that 20 times 18 equals 360. I know that two times 18 is equal to 36. So I did the 20 plus the two, there's my 20, there's my two to get me the 22. Now that I know that this is 22, I can use that fact to find other angles. So I'm gonna grab my calculator because I'm not gonna do the rest of this in my head because 
I don't need to. So six times 22 minus 14. Six times 22 minus 14, 118. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out this angle right here by subtracting 118 from 180. And I get 62. So I've got 80 and a 62. As soon as I get that second angle pair, I have an 80 and a 62 that matches with an 80 and a 62. I don't care what that upper left-hand angle is because as soon as I have two angles in one triangle congruent to two angles in another triangle, I can say yes, that those two triangles are similar to each other. So the key facts I needed you guys to understand today is um, that I just need to prove two angles in one triangle are similar to two in another. It's going to guarantee that the third angle is going to be similar. And then once, I mean congruent, and then once I prove that those angle pairs are congruent to each other, you can say that the triangles are similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording.